Now I've got a great pattern for you today, and this one comes to us courtesy of John De Bruin of Saskatchewan. Now last year, when we tied the O'Keefe Special, we talked a little bit about the Kilpatrick Fly Fishers. That was a club founded in 1985 in Saskatoon. Now the club was named for Gordon Kilpatrick, one of the founding members and considered to be a pioneer of fly fishing in Saskatchewan. And the club is still active today. In fact, they've got a book called Flies for Saskatchewan. And one of the coolest things about this book is really it's a living document. They've created it as a three ring binder with various flies in here. And as of today, they're still soliciting input from their members for flies to add to it. Now, I was lucky enough to get a copy of this book. Thank you, John, because there are some really cool patterns in it, at least two or three of them that I want to tie for the channel. And the first one I'm going to tie was submitted by their member, Bob Vary, and it's called his Silver and Red Half Hog. Now, there are a lot of half hog patterns out there. It's really just a, a half a version of a hedgehog, which is a pretty common, well-known Scottish fly. But it worked well enough in Western Canada to make it into this book. There's no reason it wouldn't be a great pattern for here in the States. No, it's basically an emerger, a semi-dry fly, meant to ride a little bit up into the surface film, you know, half dry, half wet. But this one, Bob Berry's version, this is a really cool looking pattern. Not at all hard to tie, and I think y'all are gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is, a silver and red half hog. Just look at that Sills fur thorax. That's some pretty buggy stuff right there. Pretty cool looking pattern. I'm kind of digging this so far. And I'm tying it on a 12. You could go as small as a 16, probably wouldn't go much bigger than this 12. And that's a short shank curved hook. Call it a scud hook if you will. It's just a generic 1X short, size 12, 1X heavy. I'm gonna catch in some black thread to about the midway point. And first thing I'm gonna catch in, some flat silver mylar tinsel. Catch in with a silver side toward the hook. I think this is a size, it's a 12 or 14, which roughly equates to a, a medium. So let's catch this well around the bend of the hook, just however long you want your body to be. See, maybe even a little farther than that. Okay, now I'll take our thread back up, almost all the way to the front. Let's catch in red rib. And that last one I did was a size brassy. I'm gonna step this one up to a medium. I think it could stand just a little bit thicker of a wire here. We'll see how it turns out. If this one ends up being too thick, probably should have stayed with the brassy. And for any new tires out there, brassy is a size of this wire, and it's the size between small and a medium. Okay, so we got that. That body's fairly smooth right there. It's smooth enough. Now let's go ahead and flip this flat mylar tinsel around and wrap it all the way up. Just one wrap right in front of the other. Try to keep it smooth, but I wouldn't spend a an inordinate amount of time on this because you know what happens if you don't get these wire wraps touching and you have a little bit of black thread underneath showing absolutely nothing nothing at all happens it'll still fish so let's go ahead and catch this in all the way up to the front I think that's far enough right there so we do have some bugginess we're going to be putting up here in just a second. Let's go ahead and catch this off with a couple wraps and we'll snip this excess and counter wrap this wire rib all the way up. Okay, I am liking this size brassy, I think. I'm just going to have to be a little bit careful because I'm using a 70 denier thread and this is a super thick wire. So I'm gonna to have to put several wraps right here to really lock it in. But I've caught it in kind of going forward right there so I can pull up on it and then spin it off. And with any luck, it's not gonna unravel on me. That top wrap did just a hair, but you know what? We're gonna cover that with our thorax and, and wing and all that. So let's just put a few wraps right here trying to smooth this out a little bit. Now I think we're gonna be just fine. Now the next thing I'm catching in, red tinsel. Just a flat red tinsel. This is a medium holographic if you got it. If not, just, you know, whatever you have in red, I think it's gonna look just fine. So we're gonna catch it in on each side. Maybe leave an inch or so because you're gonna need some to work with. 
when we fold it forward here in just a second. Okay, I've got those coming off either side. I'm gonna be just fine with that. And the next thing we're catching in, just a pretty small tuft of deer hair, unstacked. I have pulled a little bit of it out of the, a little bit of the under fur out right here, but it's not long. It's maybe half a length of the hook. And again, fairly sparse. I did not wax this thread. I might should have, but I want it to flare up on the back and I don't want it to really spin around. So I'm putting a couple of tight wraps right there. I think I've got it caught in well enough. Let's see. Now, with any luck, I can just snip this off and it's not going to, to spin around on me. I might need to do this in a couple of snips right here. Okay, I think I've got that enough. Now I'm going to have to spin some thread wraps right here just to try to smooth this little area out. See my thread is splitting up on me. I'm going to give it a clockwise spin just to try to bring it back together and build a little bit of an underlayer right here. Still going to have a little drop down. I got some fuzz from my thread right there, but we'll be able to take care of that in just a second. Next thing I want to do, put a generous portion of wax on my thread right here because this seals fur I'm putting on, it's quite buggy. Now, if you don't have a black seals fur like this, uh, you can use a, an artificial uh, Euro seals fur. They make that stuff, or an Angora goat, or just, you know, anything that's super buggy, and I would say in a black. So I've got a lot of wax on my thread. I'm actually gonna lick my fingers and just try to get it even a little bit tighter and it's gonna be buggy, very buggy right here. But don't worry about that. We really want it to be pretty buggy. Okay, now one of the last steps, just grab this red holographic tinsel or flat tinsel, whatever you got, and pull it up forward for the cheeks and go ahead and catch it off. Kind of like a buzzer. Okay, there's that side. Now let's do the far side right here. Okay, before we really catch them in, just kind of make sure you, you have them where you want them, and I think those are fine right there. Now I'll just pull this back and put a couple of tight wraps right here before I snip them off. Now I do have a little bit of a buggy mess on this head. I'm gonna just try and pull it all back and if I can't, you know, I can go in here with my scissors and snip it a, a little bit more or, or with a singeing tool and burn a little bit of it. But I think we're fine. I haven't cloppered my eye too much. Let's go ahead and put a whip finish on it. Now, if it isn't buggy enough, just take your brush or your little Velcro popsicle stick right here and you can brush some of that out. But in this case, I think we are buggy enough. I'm kind of liking that. Got some room for just a drop of head cement, and this guy's ready to fish. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.